In this lecture, we're going to look at and compare two more important groups found in our periodic table. We're going to look at group 14 or 4A and group 15 and 5A elements. Now let's begin with the group 14 or 4A elements. Now this group consists of five elements or at least five elements and the important elements are listed below. We have carbon which is a nonmetal. We have silicon which is a metalloid. We have germanium which is also a metalloid and we have two metals tin and lead. Now notice that in our group we have at least one of each. We have at least one nonmetal, at least one metalloid and at least one metal. Now Every single element within this group <coughs> can form four covalent bonds with other nonmetals. And every atom except the C atom, except our carbon, can form two more additional bonds with Lewis bases. Now remember what a Lewis base is. It's simply an atom or a molecule that has an extra lone pair of electron, uh, electrons that it can donate to some other uh, Lewis acid. Now let's look at D. Now only carbon is capable of forming strong pi bonds. In other words, it can form a strong double bond or a strong triple bond. No other atom found in our group 14 or 4A has that capability. Now let's jump to group 15. In group 15 or 5A, we have also at least five atoms. These are the important atoms listed. So we have nitrogen and phosphorus, which is a nonmetal, or both nonmetals. We have arsenic and antimony, which are both metalloids, and bismuth, which is a metal. Now once again, just like group 14 or 4A, we have at least one of each in our group 15 or 5A. Now unlike this group, which forms four covalent bonds with other nonmetals, group 15 or 5A forms three covalent bonds. And in addition, every single atom except the nitrogen can form two more bonds using their higher d orbitals. Now we're going to talk more about d orbitals and p orbitals and s orbitals in another lecture. Let's look at C. Now nitrogen, our this atom, can form pi bonds just like carbon can form pi bonds in group 14. And these pi bonds can be triple bonds or double bonds and they're relatively strong. But unlike this group, we have one more atom here, our phosphorus, that can form a double bond. But it's a weak double bond. But regardless, it's still a double bond, a pi bond. Now let's look at one more thing. Let's look at our N. Now normally, when we have nitrogen in a molecule or compound, that nitrogen has a lone pair of electrons. For example, in ammonia. And ammonia can take one more H because it has a lone pair of electrons. In other words, our nitrogen has the capability of forming not three covalent bonds, but four covalent bonds. And when our nitrogen takes another H, it forms a positively charged compound called ammonium.